All right, I'm going to put together a sous vide. I already have one made, and this is going to be the second revision of it. And the basic rundown is you're going to need one of these, which is a, uh, a temperature sensor relay that turns something on and off. You're going to need a stick heater like this. This is an 800 watt, 120 volt. You're going to need a submersible pump like this, runs on 110. And we're actually going to use this wire for the whole wiring of this unit. A uh, tool, uh, you're also going to need a pipe. Uh, like one of these, which is a, basically a plumbing pipe under your sink. That's going to act as a shield around our heat element, keep everything from melting. Uh, I recommend a cooler for efficiency's sake, and it looks better and actually makes this whole job work. Uh, you're going to need a hole saw, as big as you can get. The biggest I have is two and a half. Uh, that's to pierce through the top of the lid uh, so that we could put the element in and keep the wires from touching. We're going to need one drill bit. This is a 960 fourths, but whatever fits your situation, a galvanized plate, some uh, stainless steel uh, wire, this is 19 gauge, one T-bracket, four long machine thread screws. They could be uh, drywall screws if you can't find these, but something that hopefully doesn't rust. Uh, another four shorter screws, and then four, actually five really tiny screws. Two uh, sets of buck connectors, some wire ties, wire stripper, drill, a... Uh, a very heavy duty wire cut for this rack. This rack you need a, uh, chop, a hacksaw and a big piece of foam. And I'm going to assemble this all now, hopefully in under a 10 minute video. All right, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna measure to the bottom, to the bottom of the lid here. So it looks to be about six and a half inches. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this rack six and a half inches Actually, we're going to cut it seven inches, and then we're going to remove enough because these end pieces need to stick up through the plastic. You'll see what I mean in a second. All right, now that we have it cut roughly down the end, what we're going to do is we're going to strip away this top section using the nips here. All right, now that I've removed the top, you see we have two pegs sticking up, and what we're going to do is this is going to mount into here we're going to drill small holes i have a drill bit that should be roughly the same size and this is going to mount and it's going to act as a base for all our equipment all right i've got this in place you can see it pops up through the top just a slight bit i've got the t-bracket bent screwed into the top and we're just going to use it to extra secure this because this doesn't want to come out already but that'll help the reason Okay, we're going to remove this and drill that hole. All right, now we have a hole, and this hole is going to act as the pass-through for the wires for the heating element, which is here, covered by things. Because this part of the element does still get hot, so you want to keep it away from the plastic. And it's also going to run the pump wire down, and everything's going to mount to the grill, which I'm putting back now. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to take this 8-inch chrome pipe, and we're going to drill... Uh, eight holes, four on top, four on bottom. And what that's going to do is we're going to be able to take this stainless steel and put a cross section and then mount this heating element down the center of it. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second. Now the easiest way to do this is to take a length, just a random length, and fold it and make it a uh, double. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass it through the hole and out the other one. Make a loop and repeat so that we get an X inside with two, two lengths. We're going to be able to spread those apart with a screwdriver and we'll have a nice perfect space. All right, so now we've run it through and then out and then through again. And we're just, I'm just twisting the ends together where I will cut off the excess and this excess and then you could uh, use a set of pliers just to fold this down for the table and now do you see the rough X and I'm gonna open it up with a screwdriver like I said one first this way then this way 
creating a center hole and that's going to take our element and just fit it right in there. And there's one on the other side and you're going to pop right out there as well. So now you have a perfectly centered heating element protected from burning the walls or anything like that. And now you can see I've uh, zip tied this T-bracket to the main black uh, guard. And I've mounted this by simply taking more of that stainless steel wire, looping it through, twisting it, tying it off, and folding the sharp edges back. You don't want anything sharp past this line or anything hot. This is where the food's going to sit in the vacuum bags. So basically this is now mounted. We're coming through the hole here. And you can bend these slightly. You want them to come through this hole perfectly centered. Everything in the heat shrink and below is hot. These wires do not get hot. So that's where that's going to stay and we're ready to mount some more stuff. All right, I've mounted the pump and you'll notice that it's going to suck from the very bottom, which is where the cold water would sit. And it's going to throw it up, not at the hole, but at the pipe, which should be mildly warm. And it's just basically here to churn the water because when we sit it in the actual bin, you want to get that cold water off the bottom and bring it just up and around. and That'll keep everything moving in the sous vide. So one, two zip ties and the wire comes out the top. So the only other wire that's coming in here now is the temperature probe from the relay reader. And that's going to get attached right here at the bottom and it's gonna follow right back up. All right, so here we have the completed in oven assembly. The little pump is angled up at the pipe. Here is the temperature probe. A zip tie just with plastic normal zip ties up along with the wire for this and we've got the heating element and that all fits like that now what we're going to do next is we're going to figure out where we're mounting this which is the controller and i recommend far away from the hole because if any steam comes up we're going to have this covered on top uh, and insulate around this with this foam but I want to keep the 110 connections. All this is sealed wires for now. But I want to keep the 110 connections like there. So I'm going to use this roll of double stick tape. This is the 3M. And I'm not going to uh, put this down yet because it'll be a lot easier to wire if it's not attached. But I'm basically going to get all my wires stretched over. This is the temperature probe it's got to attach. This is the pump it's got to attach. Actually, the pump is constant, but I'll have the wiring schematic up in a second. All right, uh, this is the finalized wiring. Obviously, I'll settle it down. Uh, we're using a short plug because the uh, owner of this one wants to use an extension cord. It comes in, and it's split three ways, and I did that with two ends of these buck connectors. We get, uh, since it's um, alternating current, there's no positive or negative. We just have to make sure everything touches everything. So one side is directly to the heating element, directly to the pump, and directly into the power for this controller. And the other side is directly into the other end of the pump, directly into the unit here to power it. And then the last leg gets diverted to the heating side of this heating switch. And then that comes out and connects to the other end of the heating element. And basically when you plug this in, this unit comes on and the pump comes on and you wanna make sure there's water. You don't wanna run this pump dry. But so the unit here comes on, the pump comes on, and then this will determine whether it's going to make a connection there and turn the heating element on and off via the sensor. So that's it. That's the basic wiring schematic is just this. Straight from the wall, three places, straight from the wall, three places. Now to clean this up and the final touch is you have to make an insulative cover for this because coolers are designed to keep cold in and when you put hot, it all escapes through the top. I'm also going to wrap this here with some uh, insulation to keep any condensation from dripping where the wiring is. All right, finishing touch. Drill four holes, put in the four long screws. And now it's just a matter of making a box and an X that'll keep any floating, well, actually just the X is needed, but it'll keep anything that wants to float above the water, below the water, because these screws all come down below the water. And then we'll be done. All right, here is the uh, near finale. I've uh, wire tied some of these just so they stay a little neater. I put the cover back on this. It's double stick taped down. I've added this piece of foam, 
which will collect any condensation. And I've actually let this hole stay inside that. So if any condensation gathers, it could drip back down. Uh, I've taken this piece of, I guess it's 3 8 uh, anti-fatigue foam and I've cut it. I've angled the sides and I've cut out where the electronics are going. And this would just sit here and you could do two things. You could either just sit it here or I'm going to take these uh, pointy screws with a big fat head. I'm going to just go in the corners just like that and I'll explain why. Now the point of those, and I might have to get another one and add it there, the point of those is you can pull the head through like that so you can remove this cover fully for any work or checking or to show off how the electronics work. That one's crooked. But you could take it off and then just push back down like that. Yeah. And that is essentially 100% completed. I will add another screw here and maybe one here, just double checking where the wires are. You just want to keep that insulated, the wires covered, and everything good. Sous vide complete. Let's give it a test.